Hey everybody, I'm Russ Curtis, uh, counselor educator, licensed clinical mental health counselor. Uh, thank you for joining me today. Thank you for the work that you do. Um, and please, if you if, if this is helpful, please uh, share it with folks. And let me know comments, okay? Because I'm working on an article right now on um, the intersection of body art, mental health, and social justice. And your comments are really helpful in fully developing these articles. So, But education is our best defense against narcissism. So there's a lot of people doing great videos out there. I want to put some stuff in if it's helpful. Let me know. All right, so we're talking about narcissism. And one of their chief strategies is deny, deny, deny. So if they're accused of anything or if they're knocked off their pedestal, uh, they have to save face. This is actually in uh, my article. Matter of fact, I'll put a link to that. It's a article on undisclosed infidelity, but saving face is huge for folks high on the narcissism spectrum because the ego is so fragile. Their ego is so fragile. They don't have the strength to be vulnerable and admit mistakes um, or admit losses. This is just not that they're, they're not capable of that. And, and hopefully one day they might evolve into that, but not right now. This is very immature psychosocial development. Uh, people that are high in narcissism, just immature psychosocial development. If we were to look at this from an energy standpoint, just very lower chakra, un, um, uh, which, which we need, but they're not balanced with the compassion and intuition and awareness of the interconnectivity of all things. So I want to look specifically at the Duluth model. You may have seen this as the wheel of control. I've used this in counseling and in teaching a lot more than I thought I would. Um, but it is a helpful way of sh showing people that might be in abusive relationships some of the tactics used by um, folks that are potentially abusing uh, other people other people and clients and so forth. I want to look specifically at children related to narcissism and the whole deny, deny tactic, okay? So let's say they're accused of somebody high in narcissism is accused of something. Um, they can be savvy to make sure there's no video of them or um, uh, photos, not always, but, but there can be there. Um, and they, they realize that, well, if I just deny, 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 it would be more difficult um, to prove. Not that it would be impossible, but, but maybe a little more difficult. And um, so one of the ways that they do so you may ask yourself, how can somebody actually know they're lying? And, lie, and by the way, folks, they're really good at lying. I mean, if you're like me and you try to fib something, you sweat and blush and shake, they don't exhibit these characteristics. Folks that I've noticed high in narcissism don't exhibit those characteristics. They can very coolly and calmly look you in the eye, prolonged eye contact, and tell you an outright lie or deny an accusation and not have the physical symptoms. Um, so just be aware of that. But one of the ways that they're rationalizing to themselves, if they're in a family and they have kids, is that, wow, to admit a loss or to um, uh, acknowledge a mistake, uh, such as infidelity, for instance, um, I, I don't have that strength to do that. But the, what they're going to say to themselves is, well, it really wouldn't be good for the children for, for me to do this, to know this, okay? It, it's better for me to deny it and let them still trust me and think that I'm great. Again, it's the face saving. Now, I would argue that it's really not for the children. That's the excuse they're using to boldface lie. Boldface lie, I believe is what's it called. Okay, so there's many different ways that children can be used in an abusive relationship. Um, you know, for instance, it can be that, oh, you keep doing this or you keep accusing me. I'm going to take the children away. I'm going to divorce and, and take the children away. I've got all the money. Or during visitation, I'm going to harass you when I come to visit the kids and so forth. So there's a lot of different ways. Look into the wheel of control because, again, you're going to need this if you're a counselor. Or if you're going through or in a narcissistic relationship, 
please look at the wheel of control. It will help normalize your experience and then help you make better, not better decisions. We can all find ourselves in these situations and particularly people who are healers or empaths or just have a lot of light about them. I think folks high in narcissism are attracted to people like this. So education is the best defense. The Duluth model is a great one to look at. But again, if you're wondering how do they bald face lie to people about what we know they did in terms of manipulation, cheating, lying, stealing. One of the ways they do that is it wouldn't be good for the children for me to admit this. Okay, and it's just kind of been accepted almost in society. I don't think that's the way a society or a human being evolves. We have to own our mistakes. We have to move forward. That's how we learn and grow. It requires strength to be vulnerable. All right, y'all know all that good stuff. If it's helpful, please let me know. Also, let me know comments as I am writing a paper and I need your feedback. All right, take good care, people.